The 2000s was a significant decade for Mexican cinema. On the one hand, the 80s and 90s represented stagnation in the development of this art. But on the other hand, starting in this decade, fictional and not so fictional adaptations of situations, stories, music, and relationships, among many other topics, began to be made about what interests us so much, the outlaw life as a cartel member. This topic is one of the major concerns of Mexican society. That's why people might be curious and want to know a little more in depth about the lifestyle of these unpleasant subjects. One of the most popular phenomena related to the situation is the so-called narco series rise. These are characterized by exporting the lives of these criminals to the maximum to entertain the viewers. There has been a great criticism of how these movies and series are made, which is because a lot of times the figure of the narco is exalted. The idea of the bandit hero has changed to that of the narco hero. They're no longer described as dangerous subjects, but successful, good-hearted, and passionate people. These series and movies often show that these men are trying to make a living and help all of those in need. These criminals are sometimes seen as a kind of Robin Hood, giving to the poor, while their big argument is the sea of corruption in which state institutions swim. The figure of the narco hero leads us directly to think that these stereotypes shown on the screen can be easily reproduced. It's not unreasonable to think that many of these viewers reproduce a romantic analysis of these criminals. Not only this, but also some wish to be like these aspirational models. In this type of series or movies, violence is common currency, to the point of being naturalized by the viewers. If humor is added to these scenes, it's even easier to poeticize these ways of acting. Also, on the other hand, by naturalizing this type of entertainment, the illicit substances with which these groups operate are also seen in a different way. The curiosity and consumption of these substances can be even more attractive to the most vulnerable of our society. Is it okay to show these characters as they do in these series and shows? Do the reproduction of these stereotypes enhance the figures of these criminals positively? We read you, so leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video. In the following, we're going to name and describe films and series we've selected as the best on this topic, taking into account the recognition by the audience and the quality of the story they tell. This 2015's film stars Emily Blunt as Kate, Benicio del Toro as Alejandro, and Josh Brolin as Matt Graver. It tries to reproduce situations that are lived daily in Ciudad de Juarez, Chihuahua, bordered with the United States. These situations are mainly related to trafficking and the control exercised by the cartel in the streets. They show how commonplace it is to see people hanging, dead, and patrols on the roads. Groups in society are shown and differentiated. On the one hand, people in extreme poverty, criminals controlling and roaming the streets, and others trying to live their everyday lives while looking elsewhere. On the other hand, police and civilians are also associated with cartels. They are sometimes shown as people in great economic need, or seeing this as an opportunity to make easy money without being aware of the risks. The of the risks. This Mexican film is produced and scored by Cartel de Santa, a hip-hop band from Nuevo León, Mexico. It closely follows Poncho, a college student from northern Mexico, who suddenly finds himself witnessing and living situations with narcos as he decides to accompany a friend of his, the Grenas, to buy a weed for the first time. But unfortunately, by taking a few wrong steps, he gets involved with the trafficker La Bomba. This film has its moments of comedy and black humor, but also darkness and situations characteristic of this world. The film throws the viewer in adrenaline rush in every scene, so that the receiver waits for the next drama to come, accelerated and excited. The soundtrack of the film is the same as the producers. The movie uses the musical resource constantly, simultaneously as the street slang and the songs of Cartel de Santa, Narcos, Mexico. This series is arguably best known, although it has positive and negative reviews. It tells the story of the emergence of cartels in a more organized way. It shows how they go from being gangs to formal and complex criminal organizations. One of the characters is Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, founder of the Guadalajara Cartel, whose character is played by Diego Luna. Although his performance is exceptional, he suffers from the criticism that the aforementioned criminal boss didn't have the same charisma as Pablo Escobar, which makes him less attractive to the directors and the writers. It's not a documentary, and so much has been said about the integrity of the events. However, this should be taken into account before deciding whether to watch it or not. It also incurs the grave mistake of putting these reprehensible criminals in the place of heroes, 
and showing them as people who care about those who have less and help them. On the other hand, their enemies are annoying people who don't let them do their work. A clear example of this figure of Angel Gallardo, who tries to develop his work, while Kiki Camarena is portrayed as an annoying US DEA agent who goes after the steps of these drug bosses. Another figure with a negative connotation is the politicians. They're shown as dirty, corrupt, and heartless, which they can be, but the important thing is that by showing them that way, they exult and show that the criminals are not so bad. Another criticism of the film is the mediocre audio, since the viewer must constantly turn the volume up and down. You can hear volume differences in the conversation and voiceover that narrates the chapters. Beyond the criticism, it's one of the current reference series of narco-trafficking. Arena del Sur. This telenovela escapes the cliché of the typical Mexican ones. Instead, it is a highly, highly acclaimed and good series on par with other outstanding series. It tells the story of Teresa Mendoza, a young Mexican woman whose partner, El Guedo, works as a pilot for criminal organizations. After his death, she will be condemned to pay for the betrayal he had committed against the cartel. So as soon as she hears the news, she decides to flee the city. As a destination, she chooses Spain, where little by little, she'll manage to make herself respected and will end up being part of the top of trafficking, being the lead supplier of the Costa del Sol. Based on the novel by Arturo Perez Verde, it is vital to emphasize the film's main character is a woman. This is because women play a secondary role in this world, and showing Teresa Mendoza as the boss is a way of empowering women in a world plagued by men's rules. El Señor de los Cielos This series unfolds the story of Aurelio Casillas, a Mexican drug dealer orphaned as a child. He had to make a living with his brother from an early age, and that's where they entered the dark world of trafficking and crime. They show how Aurelio started from the bottom to become the head of the Juarez Cartel, and later the Lord of the Skies. He received the nickname because of the large fleet of aircraft he used to transport his merchandise. This character managed to infiltrate the Mexican state and later dominate it, becoming one of Mexico's most influential and wealthy men. The series also shows how he launders over 200 million US dollars to finance his massive fleet of airplanes. He died in 1997 after undergoing plastic surgery to change his appearance completely. Cartel de Kilo This 1997 film, directed by Eduardo Martinez and produced by Antonio Anda, is about the story of an ex-police officer who works as a reporter. This character carries out a journalistic investigation at the same time that he must confront a powerful drug boss, El Infierno. This film chronicles the problem of trafficking and organized crime in Mexico, while criticizing the bad government of Felipe Calderón Hinojosa. He was president at the time of the film's release, as well as the social conditions caused by the war on drugs during his administration. This film describes the life of Benjamin Garcia, Damian Alcazar, who leaves Mexico for the United States. After 20 years, he's deported to his country and he meets his family again. There, he finds out that his brother's dead. He leaves his wife and son behind with its awful economic situation in Mexico. He learns that his brother was a part of a criminal group called Los Tigres del Norte. After a while, his nephew was arrested for robbery, and his release will cost $50,000. That's how he decides to get involved with organized crime and the real story began. Territorio de Narcos This 2000 action film, produced and scripted by Alonso Olara, tells the story of a boss of one of these criminal organizations. This guy has taken over a town, and the authorities work for him. Everything was going well, until somebody betrays him. He talks to the police, and that's when the exciting part of the film began. Tierra de Sicarios In this film, Nacho Bantoya and his wife Dolores have formed a beautiful family, and live on a ranch very much at ease. Precisely for this reason, they never suspected that death was stalking them. When the brother of a trafficker that Nacho killed in the past arrives in the town where they live to take revenge on the authorities and the main character of this film. El Dedo Steo. This 2004 film depicts the story of a man with no identity, Mario Almada, and the criminal organization to which he belongs. After Ana is an accidental witness to the execution of a critical cartel man, she's forced to leave her home. After the heads of the organization find out about this, they call our character El Dedos de Oro, the character played by Rafael Goyri, to end the girl's life. This character receives his nickname because of his efficiency in this type of work. Have you seen any of these movies or the series I've been talking about? What do you think about our selection? We read you, so don't forget to hit that notification bell 
like our video, and subscribe to our channel.